Internal Revenue Service IRS tax news. Here are some things that gig economy workers should know about their tax responsibilities. Know this, gig economy workers. We see you, says the IRS. We may not have a complete stranglehold over the gig economy yet, but rest assured, we do see you. And we do plan on choking that gig economy to death with regulations just as soon as we can. When's the next pandemic scheduled for? so that the gig economy matches the rest of the recession-riddled region we currently inhabit. You know how it is with the government, says the IRS. We truly believe money isn't everything. However, the big guy just wants his 10%, or 30, or 50, or however much he can take, really. If you run in the right circles, we don't even care much what you actually do sell drugs, provide China with American intelligence, use political influence to get paid from foreign oil companies while we cut oil production in America. Just remember one thing, never forget. The big guy, he wants his 10% or 30 or 50 or however much he can take really. The big guy does have a substantial rate hike plan in mind. However, out of pure coincidence, it's not scheduled to be implemented until after we've taken everyone's guns. Okay, that was just a joke. Let's get into what the IRS actually says here. IRS tax tip 2022-97, June 27, 2022. Many people take up gig work on a part-time or full-time basis, often through a digital platform like an app or website. Gig work, such as driving a car for booked rides, selling goods online, renting out property, or providing other on-demand work is taxable and must be reported as income on the worker's tax return. So the IRS has spent a lot more time focusing in on gig work for multiple different reasons. Let's take a step back to kind of understand this in a, in a broader view. Note, of course, when we talk about an income tax, we're gonna be taxed on income. So everything's kind of flipped on its head. For taxes, income is kind of bad because if we have to report the income, we're subject to the tax on it. Expenses, which are usually bad, are kind of good on the tax side of things. Every transaction that we have has money or some kind of something value going from one person to the other, a trading of goods and services typically for money. Uh, the person that is receiving is having income. The person that is paying basically has an expense. So expenses are good for taxes. Income is bad for taxes. So if the government wants to kind of look over people's shoulders for the reporting of the income taxes, they're going to be looking over on the expense side of things. That's where they have the leverage. So the person that is paying is someone that wants to have a deduction. So the IRS could then say, well, if you're paying that and you want the deduction, you have to basically rat out. You got to tell us who you gave the money to. Now, if you're an employee-employer situation, that's where the government has the most leverage because in that situation, they not only can force basically the employer to tell the IRS, the government, how much they pay to the employee, but also require that they do other things such as make withholdings of the taxes, actually paying the money that would be going to the employee directly to the government. So that's where they have the most leverage. Why do they have that leverage? Because the employer wants the deduction. And so, they're, so they've got more leverage to say, if you want the deduction, do what we want you to do. And then if you go into, if you go into like a sole proprietor's type of situation, then certain sole proprietors are gonna have more regulation than other sole proprietors. So if you're a sole proprietor and you work uh, for contracts for a big company, the big company that is paying you uh, is gonna want the deduction for paying you and therefore the IRS has leverage on the person that is paying, the person that's getting the deduction. So they're gonna to go to the payer and say, well, you need to report a 1099. And therefore, even as a sole proprietor, you're not, you may not have withholdings, but you still have these 1099s that are also going to the IRS, not just to help you out. This is to help the IRS out. Same with the W-2, it's going to the IRS so that they can double check the, and look over you know, everyone's shoulders to make sure that the reporting is proper now classically there's some econ some some areas where this doesn't work quite well for example a sole proprietor that's in a restaurant or that does a hair salon nail salon masseuses and so on because they work for the end customer not another business so if you're getting paid from a customer the customer doesn't get a deduction for getting their hair done or going to a restaurant typically so the iris doesn't have the same kind of leverage to make them 
issue a 1099, which is one reason the IRS doesn't really like those kind of businesses that much because they can't look over the shoulder of them as much, which may be why they kind of crack down on them during the pandemic. But that's just a, a theory. But in any case, so now we've got the gig work, which is the kind of one of the new things that came down the pike here. And the gig work, you've got these different components involved. But at the end of the day, really what's happening is you've, you've got the worker that's working for the in-person. So if you're driving a car, then you're, you're basically working for the person that wants the ride and you're a sole proprietor in essence. But you've got this middle person, which is the platform, which is connecting the two. So the platform isn't really who you're working for. You shouldn't, so you could think of it, well, why doesn't the platform give you a W-2? And it's like, well, you're not really working for the platform. The platform is just connecting to people that want services that are really a, an individual person, not a company and, and a sole proprietor. So you would think then this would be another area where there's not any kind of reporting requirements from either of those two parties. But of course the IRS is gonna want some kind of reporting. So they're probably gonna try to step into the platform area or into whoever's paying like the PayPal or something like that that's facilitating the payment to try to get some oversight over, over these economies, which will probably hurt the economy economically, but you can see why the IRS would want to do that to get a better idea of the tax dollars that would be involved. So that's the general idea. So here are some things gig workers should know to stay on top of their tax responsibilities. Gig work is taxable. Earnings from gig economy work is taxable regardless of whether an individual receives information returns. So that means whether you get a 1099 or not, you should report the taxes. And part of the problem with this also is that the fact that the IRS has gotten so good at these kind of reporting of the W-2s and the 1099s, we've actually, they, they've put it into a system as if it seems like if you don't get one of these forms, then you're not required to, to file anything. And that's not really the case. Those forms are supposed to be kind of like a, a, double, a double check uh, type of thing. So in any case, if you worked at a W-2 job and then you work at a gig economy or something like that, you may, you're gonna, not going to have any, you've been kind of trained not to really understand how the whole thing works because it's all been kind of automatic uh, as it happens. And, and now you're in a situation where, of course, you're supposed to be required to report the income and you may not be used to that. So the reporting requirement, there's a link to that here for issuance of Form 1099-K change for payments received in 2022 to totals exceeding $600 regardless of the total number of transactions. This means sub gig workers will now receive an information return. This is true even if the work is full-time or part-time. Gig workers may require to make quarterly estimated tax payments. So no matter what you're doing, if you're going to a sole proprietor type of business, you're probably from a W-2 business, you're probably not used to making quarterly estimated payments because again, the fact that the, that the IRS has made it so kind of automatic and forced the employer to do it has kind of made us uh, become not totally aware of what is actually happening. So if we move to somewhere either through going to a sole proprietorship from a W-2 or going to retirement, we're often doing so without without the tools we need to know understand that our own income taxes that we're basically paying because we've we've got a system we're not we're not the ones actually physically paying it they're taken out of our checks already so you got to keep that in mind because if you don't have that even if your gig economy is going well you'll you'll end up at the end of the year without reporting taxes or something that you'll get crushed with taxes at some point and that's really disheartening so if they are self-employed gig workers must pay all their social security and medicare taxes on their income from the gig activity social security and medicare are often taxes again we're not getting a grasp of it when we file the form 1040 because usually we're just thinking about uh, income taxes there and getting a refund from the withholdings that have been taken out but the social security and medicare are also things that we're going to have to deal with if we're a sole proprietor and they're substantial so uh proper worker classification while providing gig economy services is is important that the taxpayer is correctly classified this means the business or the platform must determine whether the individual providing services is an employee or independent contractor so again this gets confusing with the gig economies because really you would think the platform itself is connecting to people and and therefore is just basically a connecting platform not that the people are working for the platform but again the irs is going to want it 
so that the platform that you're working for the platform or at least a contractor of the platform or a contractor in some way so they can force somebody to issue uh, issue W-2s or and or uh, uh, the 1099 forms. Taxpayers can use the workers classification page on irs.gov to see how they should be classified. So independent contractors may be able to deduct business expenses depending on tax limits and rules. It is important for taxpayers to keep records of their business expenses. So paying the right amount of taxes through the year. An employer typically withholds income taxes from their employees pay to help cover income taxes their employees owe. So again, they, they say it as if it's a, a helpful thing. Obviously, I mean, it could be helpful. It's an easy thing to have the withholdings taken out, but clearly it is done from the IRS's perspective to force the, the employer to take the money out to make sure they get paid, right? So, the, so that you never touch the money. But again, it makes us not a little bit lackadaisical, not really understand you know, how, the, how the process works because we're not actually setting that up or making the payments oftentimes. So gig economy workers who aren't considered employees have two ways to cover their income taxes. They can submit a new W-4 to their employer to have more income taxes withheld from their paycheck if they have another job as an employee. So if you're a W-2 employee and then you pick up gig work, you're not going to have possibly the same uh, kind of payments coming out of the gig work, but you're going to have more income. So if you can adjust your withholdings on your other part-time job to cover your gig economy work, it might be that you're basically withholding almost everything on your other job, but because now you've got this other income from the gig economy, but that's one way that you can, you can do it. Uh, make quarterly estimated tax payments. Uh, uh, income taxes through the year. So the other way you do it is to actually set up your quarterly taxes and pay on a quarterly basis throughout the year. This is difficult because you don't know how much you're going to owe until the end of the year because we have a progressive tax system. We have a tax system that's currently changing all the time. And we have a complex tax system with a lot of different kinds of deductions and 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 so on that, that can alter the taxes from year to year so you really don't know what your taxes are until you file the tax return by april 15th possibly of the following year uh, but you have to you're, you're supposed to pay as you go so you have to make the estimates and if you don't do that then you're going to end up with a big tax bill at the end of the year and possibly tax penalties and interest which can really hamper a business that otherwise could be doing quite well just because you know you got behind on the taxes. So the Gig Economy Tax Center on irs.gov answers questions and helps gig economy taxpayers understand their tax responsibilities. More information are at the links below. You got publication 5369, Gig Economy and Your Taxes, Things to Know. Publication 1779, Independent Contractor or Employee, Is My Residential Rental Income Taxable and or Are My Expenses Deductible? There's links to that stuff here. There'll be a link to this in the description.